In the UK at the moment, there are thought to be at least 10 million dogs and 10 million cats, and they suffer from a wide range of diseases. And much of the biology of these diseases is really incompletely understood. We have very little understanding, in a lot of cases, why some animals develop disease, and in some cases, why some animals respond to some treatments, but some animals don't. And so really, we're very, very interested at Edinburgh to try and develop new techniques and new treatments to try and improve the welfare of patients um, both within our own hospital, but on a much wider basis as well. The vast majority of the research that we undertake in the hospital simply runs alongside the delivery of top quality care to the patients that come and see us in our hospital every day. Running alongside that, we also have other programmes of research that is focuses on trying to understand the development of diseases and why some patients develop diseases in client-owned animals. All of our veterinary clinical research is undertaken on client-owned cats and dogs that live at home just as normal pets with their owners. We have one study ongoing in the hospital at the moment which is trying to understand whether dogs have the same seasonal changes in vitamin D status as occurs in humans. In humans what we know is that in late summer they have very high levels of vitamin D but by winter where there's less UV light exposure they develop lower levels of vitamin D. And really what we're trying to understand is whether dogs living in this part of the world develop that same seasonal changes in vitamin D status. To allow us to address that question, we're simply taking a blood sample from a cohort of dogs once a month for a year and then measuring vitamin D metabolites within the blood samples. Our previous work has shown that dogs with low levels of vitamin D have higher markers of inflammation, whether that's higher neutrophil counts, or higher concentration of inflammatory cytokines within the blood or more inflammation within diseased tissues. And what we're now keen to understand is whether vitamin D status is simply a, a marker of an inflammatory process or whether it's intrinsically involved in the development of an excessive amount of inflammation. In order to explore the relationship between vitamin D and inflammation in dogs, we're simply measuring vitamin D metabolites before, immediately after and long term after surgery in dogs that have ruptured or damaged their knee um, during walks with their owners. And what we're interested in trying to understand is whether dogs that have low levels of vitamin D have a high amount of inflammation once they have a standard surgical repair of their knee injury. Um, so Fender comes to the hospital for his um, normal vet checks and his vaccines um, and I also um, am a veterinary nurse working in the hospital as well. I do have other dogs um, and they have been ill in the past, um, so being able to find sort of better treatment options um, for pets when they do get sick I think is very important. Um, so a Fender being a young fit dog can um, help out with that, um, then I think that's great. It's not very onerous at all, um, Fender just has a blood sample taken each month um, and I just hand them over to the, the capable hands of the, the vet and nurse team here um, who I know are all highly skilled and take care of Fender um, and as you can see he loves coming into the hospital so that's always a good sign that he wants to come back again. It really is only through undertaking high quality clinical research that we're going to understand more about why some patients develop diseases and some don't. And ultimately we have to do this work in order to develop better therapies.